Good morning, afternoon, evening or night, whenever you're watching this, welcome. It's a rainy sort of a day, not really the best conditions to film in, but I have to be in town anyway, with just over one and a half hours to kill, and what I felt like killing time with today was heading on down to the river for a spot of modest treasure hunting, so let's wander along the canal bank, hop a fence, go down a muddy hillside to a wall, and down the wall to a little riverside beach, and see what there is to find. <laughs> A bit of a ritual, bringing some seed for hungry birds. They get a healthy meal and I get lowering of cortisol and perhaps a little bit of oxytocin. Oh, geese aren't to everyone's tastes. They can be quite scary for some people, but they never have quite managed to scare me, even at their fiercest, grumpiest and hissiest. Yeah, that's not a real word, but it did convey my meaning. And I like them. They're sometimes sweet and sometimes funny. And it stopped raining, for now. Right then, over this fence, down this hillside, along the wall beyond the fence that surrounds an electrical substation. The river level has been much higher than this for most of the last month, and it's only just fallen back down. I have checked and the rain could raise the levels a tiny bit further downstream, but the upstream forecast is dry. My plan for today's mudlark is modest. Get down onto that little rocky beach and have a look around. If I don't find anything, then no video. Gosh, this tree has grown up a bit since last I was here. If I fancy it after the beach, then a brief wander up through the nearby tunnel and then downstream too not going far and with minimal expectations. Oh, this beach, it really doesn't look much, does it? But it's a low pressure widening spot after the tunnel and this river for all its faults. It's currently the second most polluted river in the UK, further downstream. Well, it's also got quite a lot of history with people living near it and making things, some of which, a very small percentage, ends up in the river thousands of years of human occupation. Of course most, if not all, of what I'll find today will be less than 200 years old, during which time the Industrial Revolution brought with it a massive population growth to the area, drawn to work in mills that made use of the steep valleys and the free power that could be drawn from falling water. A bit of blue and white, heavily curved from the lid of something like a vegetable dish, not everything I find I will want to take. Stoneware, plain. China, also plain. And, ha, ah, a flower. Ceramic, might be porcelain or a close relative. It's strong, hard to needle up, sharp edges. Just changing my position was starting to get a cramp in my leg. I do think I'll take this. It's something I might be able to use in a craft project. Snail shell. With a snail resident in it, I think it must have fallen down from the wall. I'll put it back up top on some tasty greens. Some blue and white. Well, it actually looks almost black and white. A hint of blue in the colour, and surprisingly well worn, in comparison to almost every other piece I've found on this beach. More blue and white, but the kind that was a faded light blue to begin with, not really to my taste. A wood plank, an iron pole, another iron pole in the water, and the entrance to a dark little tunnel. 
It's the only one I know of that supports both a road and a railway. The road crosses the river on an oblique angle, and the railway crosses above at much closer to 90 degrees. I will go through it, but I may as well save it for when it starts raining again. That looks like... Well, it kind of looks like part of a revolver, but it's plastic, and so I think it's part of a high-capacity 7-pin plug. A little bit of plastic out of a river. There's a small bubble-like shape poking out of the mud. If it's a bubble, a bit of water should pop it. Nope, it did not pop. Oh my gosh. This is probably one of the most beautiful marbles that I've ever found. Let's wash the mud off. Well, three or four different shades of blue and white ribboned through it. It's beautiful. And this, I think, is the decider, the thing that makes the difference between an outing that I start filming and then stop, because I find nothing very much and the light isn't great for filming and I have nothing very interesting to talk about, and one that I keep filming and eventually edit into a video. A knife. It's stainless steel, a little bit river stained, and 50s to 80s design, I think. Somewhere in that range, and not too well up on cutlery design. Ah, second marble of the day. This one's simpler, a cod bottle marble. May even be modern, as cod bottles are still made, and this one isn't very worn. Plastic. Insulation tape. Ceramic. Porcelain again, but plain again. A little brass buckle, shoe buckle I think, and sadly I don't think it's got all that much age to it. It feels fairly modern. I'll still take it. Oh, I recognise this. Somebody somewhere upstream and fairly long ago lost their camera. It must have been a very sad loss. Looks to be part way through a film, and yeah, there's no hope of developing this film to find out whose camera it once was. Not really any value to it now, but probably shouldn't be left in the river. This thing... I'm unsure what it is. Let's see if hitting it on a rock helps. Well, it now looks kind of like a light fitting. Ceiling light, maybe. Not really much of interest to me, but I'll remove it. Chew. Plastic removed. The metal plate there, aluminium I think. Yep. And beneath the considerable grime there's the ghost of words. I am not going to be able to clean that off here and now, so I'll take it home and give it a soak and a scrub and hopefully it'll be something interesting. It's just started to rain again. This rust, very very rusty, might once have been a car part. I'm thinking perhaps an ignition. Nope, that's rusty iron. Too heavy for today's activities. Oh, this too is heavy, very heavy indeed, but this, ah uh, yeah, got to remove this, it's lead, quick cladding I think, and the tannins that often make the water of this river a rich brown colour change the pH enough to slowly dissolve lead. Just going to put it in an obvious place so I don't miss it on the way back.
fish. Can anyone tell me if fish are more docile or less reactive in tunnels and even in the sudden light difference that a torch provides? I don't think one out in the daylight would stand for me standing over it like this. Oh, it's one of those. Mostly lead, old plumbing fixture. I'm not 100% sure what it was, sink or toilet related. Let me know if you know. It's full of stones adding to the weight. And yeah, I think my plan has to be take all of these lead things out of the river, up to near the canal path, but not take them home. Collect them another day. There's way more weight in the lead I've found already for the bag that I have today to cope with. Ah, hose pipe not wire as I hoped. Still plastic, so going to remove it. I see another fish. I wonder if they come into this tunnel to sleep. I shall try to get by without disturbing it. This little gravel bar, I think. I'll get that when I don't have my hands full. That too. I found a brick, and this thing, a piece of the shell of a tortoise, well, a ceramic representation of one, probably once a garden ornament. Not sure I have any use for it, but it does remind me of a craft project in tension that's fallen down the endlessly changing project list. This copper pipe, I have got use for this. not going to go far beyond the tunnel today. Instead I want to try to go a bit further downstream than I've managed before on this stretch of river. This side of the river, I haven't really gotten to walk much of it. The access points are few and far between. There is a little beach a bit downstream where I did once find a few interesting things, but how I got to it was down a hillside that's now being built on. Of course, I could access all of it with waders and no time limit, but I have neither of those today. So I'm going to climb over this rock and I'll be limited in how far I go by how long it takes me and how deep the water is. to a pipe beneath the riverbed. I'm not sure why it's shaped like that, like a cast iron sail. Any ideas of its purpose, anyone? A stick. Are there any other mudlarkers watching who think of wire as a thing worth finding? If so, you'll probably be able to empathise with how I'm feeling, having just been duped by a stick. A little bit of blue and white, feather edge pattern. Spoon. Stainless steel and not all that old. Not much else on this beach today. Some blue and white. Not a bad piece of pattern. I'll take it. Swing top bottle stopper. A modern one. Still got the swing. No branding left on it though. Too many things in hand. Gotta sort that. Okay, onwards. Cast iron. Many, many possible former uses. Rain does limit things a bit. One raindrop on the lens that I don't notice can ruin several shots, so I've got to keep it pointing downwards. 
About this point is how far I got downstream on the other side of the river, and on this side there's plenty more beach, even if there isn't much on it to find. Then some houses, pipes, a bridge that I don't think I'll get to. Used to cross that bridge to get to a pub that I used to go to for open mic nights. Performed a few times there, guitar playing. I don't do live performances anymore. Terrible stage fright before, during and after being on stage. Big piece of lino. And over there, a long line of hosepipe. I will see if I can remove them both on my way out. I guess this pipe is probably sewer line and might be out of use. I hope so. It looks old and cast iron is quite brittle, not really used much anymore. I hope it's disused because I saw a huge chunk of masonry with a large steel girder sticking out of it in the tunnel. And it's not far, another flood level event would have no trouble slamming it down on this pipe. I see a ceramic insulator. They're not particularly high on my personal scale of desirability, but an entirely intact ceramic one of this size is something I haven't found yet. Maybe a C-list bucket list find. Ugh, this mud smells pretty bad. Stagnant. Not sure yet if this one is intact. It's really stuck in there. Not sure if I can get it out. Okay, got some movement. That's a dirty mess of smelly mud. Let's try and wash some of that off, see if it's intact. Even if it is intact, I'm not sure I want all the rust that's firmly attached. The plastic I'll definitely try to take, the copper as well. But the insulator, Richard Surridge, can you tell me if this is worth coming back for? The romantic part of me thinks that living by the river would be a very fine thing indeed. The romantic part of me is very wrong. These houses are often flooded, and they're right next to a very noisy main road on the other side. This river is nice to visit, but I really wouldn't want to live here. Bundle of stuff. Wire and fabric. Feels like wool. A button pearlescent button, guessing then that this fabric was once a cardigan. I'll get what I can out of it, the plastic, the wire and maybe the buttons. Is that a ball I see? Ah, uh, no, it's an avocado pear seed. I have tried several times to sprout these, never had any luck, and it wouldn't grow well in the West Yorkshire climate even if I could persuade it to sprout. I don't think I can get as far as the bridge today, the water's too deep. Maybe later in the year I could try again. Late summer here tends to be a lot drier. Ha, huh, I am very wet now. A roundup time. Because of all the history that surrounds that river, on the hills and in the valleys, there's always the hope of finding something interesting and ancient in the river. And yes, I have found things in that river that date back all the way to the Carboniferous period and the Jurassic, and more recent human relics dating as far back as about 2,000 years. This outing, though, yielded nothing much older than a 100 years old, and most of it is much younger than that. The things aren't especially interesting either, but mudlarking as a 21st century hobby needs more than just finds to sustain it. For me, it's also about getting out into nature and feeling the power and ever-changing temperament of the rivers, coming to understand them a bit better, and maybe, hopefully, seeing a bit of wildlife up close, little fish and the geese, other birds, and the ever-present hope of maybe, possibly, one day seeing an otter. I guess what I'm trying to say is, good finds might make for a more interesting video, but I hope that a rainy day in Promptu Mudlark, where nothing particularly interesting was found, can still make for an enjoyable video. If so, then I might conceivably film more outings, ones that I enter into without expectation or much hope of relics to find, when I just have a need inside for some outside. Okay, now that I've down-talked them considerably, the finds. 
some fairly nicely river worn pieces of pottery, one of which I actually quite like as a potential jewellery pendant piece. Two marbles always welcome finds, and I think that now I'm more confident with what my rock tumbler does to glass, I might put these through a cycle, especially the cod marble. I'd quite like to try making a cod marble and silver pendant, and for that, frosted sea glass look is the best. Frosted river glass look holds quite a bit of dirt that I've been unable to scrub away. I think the rock tumbler will have better success. This piece of pottery tortoise shell, the only use that I have for it is as a reminder of a craft project that I've wanted to do for years, a model of Terry Pratchett's Discworld. Too many projects, not enough time or energy. In fact, I've recently been going through the diagnosis process for chronic fatigue syndrome, but I hope one day I can make it happen regardless, and a reminder seen every now and then will keep it, if not at the top of my project list, at least from dropping out of mind entirely. The camera. I didn't when I found it, but I do now know well the loss of losing a camera to water. It's a triple wrench of losing the footage and photos on the camera, facing the hefty cost of replacing it, and the self-recrimination for the mistake of misjudging things so badly. I hope the loss of this one didn't hurt its former owner too harshly. This aluminium plate actually turned out to be fairly interesting, and a bit mysterious. Elsint was an Israeli-founded company that was heavily into medical imaging, and they made several impressive innovations in computerized tomography CT scanning. Before the company was split, sold off, bought, and eventually deteriorated into a far less interesting holding company for a real estate magnate engaged in developing hotels and shopping malls. How the serial number and maintenance plate off of a CT scanner, probably from the late 1980s to early 90s, ended up in the river downstream of a town which didn't then and still doesn't have a hospital is the mystery, and I will probably never know. It is a bit mysterious, but probably actually also quite prosaic, something like a CT scanner being scrapped somewhere near the river, and absolutely nothing at all to do with the notorious serial killer Dr. Harold Shipman, who once worked in that town about 15 years before the CT scanner was made. Oh, I do try to find interesting stories to tell about the things that I find. It's just not often possible. Copper and brass are another part of a value that I find in mudlarking. Not much in scrap value, just about three British pounds worth, but it's more than I had before I went on an impromptu mudlark, and it's enough to fill a crucible for a forge fire up. I am planning on doing many more forge videos in future, as many as I have interesting and challenging ideas for, so if you have any ideas for what you'd like to see me attempt to make with my forge, then I'd be happy to hear them. Strange and ridiculous ideas for preference, things that others melting channels haven't already done. That's the finds, and now the thanks. Two lots of two things were bought from my non-video related Amazon wishlist. My friends Caroline and Phil of the YouTube channel Let's Go With The Johnsons bought me this now empty box of incredible chocolates for Christmas. Monty Bojangles Cocoa Nib Nights, velvety and incredibly rich, just one is enough each day, and they bought this book too. Thank you so much Caroline and Phil, and I do hope that we can meet up again this year, maybe down in Wales and maybe in West Yorkshire, maybe both. And a long time wonderful supporter of this and several other mudlarking channels, Louise Guerin, bought the other two books in the series. Thank you so much Louise, I'm halfway through reading the first one and these are next. A big thank you to anyone who presses the like button or the dislike button, the subscribe button and the bell icon, writes a comment, replies to somebody else's comment, shares a link to my videos on another platform. It all helps. Another big thank you to all of the kind people who donate through Kofi, super chats during premieres, super thanks on video pages, and purchases from my Amazon wish lists. I am very grateful. And a final thanks in advance to anyone who has been waiting and hoping to post something to me. A shop in town has kindly agreed to act as a sort of P.O. box for me, for a few months at least, see how it goes, and the address is currently in the description of all my videos. I hope that you're keeping safe and well, looking after yourself and loved ones as best you can. Thank you all very much for watching, and for now, goodbye.